You listening to precept on precept. Captain Shim break it down to no meat left. Line upon line in the word make you respect. History collegiate when we teach it, brains reset. You listening to You listening to precept on precept. Captain Shim break it down to no meat left. Line upon line in the word make you respect. History collegiate when we teach it, brains reset. You listening to precept on precept. Captain Shim break it down to no meat left. Line upon line. The word make you respect. History collegiate when we teach it, brains reset. Putting in the work for the most high. Valley of the bones coming back and we gon' ride. Showing you our past didn't stop with that boat ride. We a nation made of kings, yeah, we chose right. Yeah. Bringing our identity back. We the praise of the Lord, they pretend to be that. Yeah. Truth it is something special, they can never be that. We raise the vengeance with the knowledge so our enemies crack. In fact, listen to the class in the topic. Bomb subject matter. Israel United in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. Welcome to Fix Your Face with uh, IUIC New Orleans. We're going to hold it down for Deacon IBL today. Happy New Moon, Israel. I'm uh, your host, Officer Matthew, to my left. Officer Mikael. Far left. Officer Micah. Even further left. Officer Eran. And uh, we're going to hold down Fix Your Face today. And look, we got a good topic for y'all. The topic is called the aesthetics of music or the aesthetic property of music music all right we need topics like this because a lot of people don't understand what music plays in our lives today y'all wondering why there's a whole bunch of foolishness going on why they got uh uh, uh the, the skinny pants movement and uh you know the ratchet movement and all of this that and the third our people all bugged out of their mind music plays a big part in it it plays a big part in it so Without further ado. So we about to fix faces, precept upon precept tonight, yes. huh? Yes, we fixing faces, precept upon precept. Don't learn today. So, right. first off, I want to get what is, what is it, what is the aesthetic properties of music? What does that mean? What does that word even mean? Let's get that definition. It's the definition of aesthetics. I got the Wikipedia already. The link is already up there. Come on, y'all messing up already. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Come on now, dog. Pray for the IT team. <laughs> Pray for the IT team. Pray for the IT team. Man. Hey, the IT team does a great job, man. I sent a list of links. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The IT team does a great job. All right, all right. So, the aesthetics of music. Go ahead and read that off, see, Ryan. The aesthetics of music is a branch of philosophies that deals with the nature of art, beauty, and taste in music, and with the creation of our apparitions of uh, our, excuse me, our appreciations of beauty and music. So it is the branch of philosophy that deals with the art, beauty, and taste in music, and with the creation or appreciation of music. Read on. In the pre-modern tradition, the aesthetics of music or musical aesthetics explored the mathematical and cos cosmology, cosmological, cosmological dimensions of ryth rhythm, rhythm. Hey, hey, real quick. Excuse me. Real quick. It's a big word. You know what this sounds like? Huh? It sounds like Egyptology and music, mathematics and co cosmology, and cosmological. Foolishness. It, it has a lot to do with a lot of stuff. Music does a lot. Music does a lot. That's why all these brothers in music is universal. <laughs> right there. Read on. In harmonic organization. Uh-huh. In the 18th century, focus shift to the experience of hearing music. So in the 18th century, meaning in the 1900s, the focus shift. It wasn't no longer about the beauty of the creation of the art. 
It was about what you experience hearing music. So what music actually does to you when you listen to it? Mm. 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 Seems like Esau figured something out. Uh-huh. Read on. And thus, to question about its beauty and human enjoyment of music, the origin of this philosophic shift is sometimes attributed to Brown. Baumgarten. Baumgarten in the 18th century, followed by Kant. So these, the the aesthetics of music is basically how music affects your experience. How music affects your experience, especially your experience in life. Now, go to the Business Insider. Go to the Business Insider. Yeah. Former Music X describes the scary meaning that results in today's violent rap music. So there's a music executive that was out there, and for those of y'all who don't know, I did major. I was, I was, uh, my major in college was uh, music, b- music industry studies. That was my major in school. All right, and I went to a Jesuit. Is it Jesuit? Yeah, I went to a Jesuit school. All right, where they taught you about religion and music at the same time. Mm. So I gained a lot of of listening to Esau talk. Now watch this. This is a former music exec that is that describes the scary meaning that resulted in today's violent rap music. Read that. What if rap music is just a tool to turn imperse impressionable listeners into prison-bound degenerates. Read that again. Read it again. What if rap music is just a tool to turn impressionable listeners into prison-bound degenerates? Music, rap music, is a tool that is being used to turn our people into prison-bound degenerates. Y'all got to understand where this is coming from. Things that make you say, hmm. They, y'all got y'all to understand where this is coming from. This is, this is deeper than just, uh, y'all, y'all wonder why uh, a lot of the music today you don't agree with. Like, man, why is this even out? Why is this even a thing? Who, who gave this dude a record deal? There's always purposes and points behind it. Always. Everybody that is signed, they're signed for a reason. Mm. No longer is it about your your lyric ability, your storytelling ability, your ability to make songs. They will make the song sound hot. That's why you hear a dumb song over and over. Uh-huh. You be like, man, well, I, I like the beat now. I hated it at first, but now I at least like the beat. That's how they get you. Read on. So it's, it, it, it says the, a, a tool to turn impressionable listeners into prison-bound degenerates. So that means... The music puts a spirit on you. Yeah. Yeah. Read on. That's what one man's claiming to be a former music executive said in an anonymous letter published today by the blog hiphopisred.com. Go ahead. According to the mystery man's letter, gangster rap is a product designed to benefit private prison systems. Now, remember... This is precept upon precept, so don't think I don't have another article to validate this one. I do. Oh, I do. Give me that in Ephesians 4.29. Give me that. He said, according to this letter, gangster rap is a product designed to benefit private prison systems. How would it benefit private prison systems? How? Because it's turning them into degenerates. So, read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, Uh but that which is good to the use of edifying. So if you're using communication that's edifying and uplifting, you're not going to turn somebody into a prison-bound degenerate? Nope. But if you're saying certain things in your music that's degrading women, that's that's showing hatred for your brother, you always got to talk about Sleeping with somebody else, killing somebody. Guess what? 
Why do you think these little dudes is walking around here bugged out their mind, rapping music with no headphones in? Y'all seen that before, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. They, they walk up and down the street rapping loud as hell with oh. no headphones in. Uh-huh. I've you seen wonder it. why they're doing that? They're being hypnotized slowly but surely. Read on. That it may... No. Go ahead. That it may minister grace un, unto the hearers. So hearers. your communication is supposed to be edifying and minister grace unto the hearers. Esau found a way to flip that. Hey, can I get a scripture? Yeah. Can we get 1 Samuel 16 and 16? Let's show y'all something about this music. I got it right here. Hold on. Oh, y'all read this. The book, of first, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 16. Let our Lord now command thee, ser- command thy servants, uh-huh. which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player of an harp. So it's there, seek out a man who's a good player of the harp, who, who knows how to work this music. Like, read on. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hands, and thou shall be well. So if you play in a certain type of music, it can take an evil spirit off of you. So in the same token, it could put an evil spirit on you. And that's what they figured out. That's what they're doing. With, that's why they say rap music, gangster rap music, is a tool. Because in the, in the uh, early and mid-'80s, we was rapping about self-destruction. You hit it to self-destruction. Get off the drugs. Stop doing this. Uh, U-N-I-T-Y. And then it changed to F you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to shoot you. Niggas with attitude. Why do y'all think that changed? Because they figured out something about this music and how it moves spirits. Yep. To add to your point, can we get verse 23? Read verse 23. Verse it goes tw- right, right along. Also, Mika, you, just, you pretty much just paraphrased verse 23. Read that. First Samuel 16 and verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul. Because when a lot of our people, like you were saying, they have that wicked spirit on them because like, I'm going to kill this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to destroy you. And now let's see what happens when um, he plays music. Read on. That David took in heart. He took his music. Read. And played it with his hands. Come on. So Saul was refreshed. Read. And was well. And the evil spirit departed from him. That's why they can't stand the, the uplifting U N I T Y. Help your brother. Music like that. They will not make that mainstream. Nope. They will never do that. Nope. Now watch this. Go back to the article. Read. The man writes. The man writes that he was that he went to a Los Angeles meeting in 1991 and immediately signed a confidentiality agreement. What follows shocked him. And the other people at the meeting. Because a lot of y'all may not know, especially those of us that was, you know, once chasing the aspirations of record deals and being in the music industry. There's a lot of NDA forms that you sign when you sign to a lot of these major labels. That's why a lot of brothers, when they go to these major labels, it's a wake up call for them. And a lot of them go independent and stay independent. They use the labels as a springboard, but a lot of them, like all of the, the little Young Thug and Lil Uzi Vert and all, a lot of them are the slaves of their record label. They ain't got nothing else to do but what the record label tell them to do because they getting fed money. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Read on. The industry executives were asked to promote gangster rap in order to drive up the numbers of inmates and profits for the private prison systems, which funded the business. So... They said they need to promote gangster rap in order to get the private prison systems more inmates. Why? Because they know that black people are very impressionable. When you look throughout history, even when you look at interracial relationships, you got a black man with an Asian, right? Mm -hmm. You don't see the Asian dressed up like a a, a black girl. Doing black girl, you see the black man among the Asian family, doing yep. Asian things. Yep. You got a black man and a white woman. You don't see the white woman among the black people at the cookout. Come on, <laughs> no You see all. him among them with the casserole with the raisins in it. Damn. And you Damn. know what's crazy? If you if you talk to a lot of older generation, I, I remember when I was coming up, they would say, what you got that garbage, that crap? Don't know who that junk. And they turn on like some uh, Al Green or... You know, some BB... Some as, if, BB as if that was better. I, I know, right? As if that was better. <laughs> it really was a little bit more subtle, but... You know like, what I'm saying? This nigga talking about killing people. Like, y'all listen to this junk? Turn that 
garbage out. You know, like, you need some like, other like, words. Like but. Curtis Mayfield was a lot better. You know what I'm saying? Pushing man. <laughs> he, he's singing about selling cocaine to you <laughs> in, a, in a Cadillac with a diamond, diamond in the back, with a sunroof top. Come on, man. Lord help. <laughs> hey, if I can, can I get a scripture as well? First Corinthians fifteen thirty three, because at the end of the day, these devils they know our Bible. They studied it in order to know, you know, what keeps us in sin and know what, you know what I'm saying? Read that mm -hmm. real quick. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Bring it up. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. The scripture says evil communication corrupts good manners. So they stay read that and they say, you know what? Damn. So we can corrupt them with music, the TV, the television, all this stuff that y'all see. In the media, Cardi B, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, gangster rap, uh, homosexual rap. Guess what? Look at your communities. You're going to see that in your communities. Nah, you got little girls on the streets twerking, singing Cardi B, gangsters toting guns, talking about they're going to kill, kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that stuff messes with your mental. You ever heard the saying, art imitates life? Yeah. It does. Yeah, because a lot of these dudes, now I'm not going to lie. A lot of these guys, especially the guys that I grew up on, you know, they came from nothing and they made something out of it. You can't keep rapping about being in the hood if you're living in the suburbs. Yep. Your, you, your life has changed. Therefore, your music should change. But that's not what they tell. That's not what the record executives tell you. Even T.I. came out and said, well, yeah, I'm married. I've been married. But the record execs don't want you to talk about your marriage. They want you to talk about smashing other females and doing. You basically have to put on the persona that you're single in this life in order for you to make money for yep. the record company. Beyonce. Like that's why that's why uh, Chance the Rapper, that's why he got so much flack because he told people, "Yeah, I'm married." He came out was rapping about family and stuff like that. That's why you don't hear a lot of Chance the Rapper no more unless right. you go look for him. Right. Unless you are a fan of his and you go search his music out, you're not going to see him in the public like that. That's why, why you think Kendrick Lamar had to stop? Because he wasn't talking about what they wanted him to talk about. Even though he, you know, he was part of, uh, he, had he had a creative control. A lot of the stuff that he was going to start talking about, they don't want to hear it. Mm -mm. They don't want to hear righteousness. They don't want to hear edifying. They want to hear what, what Young Thug talk about. They want to hear what little Baby talk about. Smash some women. Do some drugs. Get get some people. Free free Ray Ray. Free Pookie. Free all of them. Rap about that. For they the don't sisters, want that. All the single ladies. They want to hear stuff like that. Yeah. Beyonce married talking about all the single, all the single ladies. ladies. Come on now. I, I need You're married. No, you need, uh, what's his name? You need Jay-Z. You don't need no damn soldier. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on now. Read that. All right. Here's part of the man's account. Of the meeting. Blow that up for me a little bit. I can see it. It says, uh, quickly after the meeting began, one of my industry colleagues, who shall remain nameless like everyone else, thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by the first name and gave no farther details about his personal background. I think he was the owner of the residence, but it was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industry and congratulated us for, be, for being selected as, port, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable at the strangeness of this gathering. What? The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies were represented, we represented, had invested in a very profitable industry, which could become an even more rewarding with our achieved active, active involvement. He explained that he that the companies we worked for had invested millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. So a guy at the meeting said, look, we put money into privately owned prisons. 
with this type of involvement of music, you could actually help us to fill these positions. I mean, fill these these prisons up. You know what I'm saying? Go to Music and Jail. The article that I got named Music and Jail. Why are you getting that? Can we get a script? Yup. Isaiah 42 and 22. The Good. book, a lot of us know brothers and sisters in the prison system. And what's the one thing they give them in the prison? They give them that radio. Now they got, I think they got cable now. So they, they get BET. They still get, they get, they stay current with all yeah, the they, new, they, they got, they got, the they got everything in there. They got cable. They uh-huh. got uh, video games in certain prisons. They got, they, yeah, they keep them entertained. Mm-hmm. This is why <laughs> I read that. Isaiah 42 and 22. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 22. But this is a people. That's the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They're in, there, they're in prison right now probably singing about Maria. Robbed and spoiled. Uh-huh. They are all of them snared in holes. Come on. And they are hid in prison houses. And they, they, they worried about getting out here, but they giving them all the music and all the stuff to keep them corrupted in there. Our people still destroyed in these prison houses. Read. They are for a prey. Uh, they were a trap, like the school to prison pipeline. A lot of times, if you lay on, lay on the Snapchat, this uh, TikTok, all this crazy music, leading their behinds right to the prison system. That's why they got what's known as the hip hop police. Yep. They will sit there and they will watch you. You talking about drugs and guns oh, yeah. and money and all of that stuff in your raps? Well, guess what? These people are going to watch you. Yeah. And if you really are doing what you say you're doing, They'll sign you. guess what? Might You're going deal. to go to jail. <laughs> yep. Guess what happened to the rapper Mac that came out of New Orleans? It was jail. He went to jail. You want to know why? Not because they found him guilty of the crime that he was accused of, but because his music said, murder, murder, kill, kill. 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 Ish real on, on the, the battlefield. battlefield. That, was the, that was the song that the jury, that was played for the jury at his trial. They convicted him off of his album. He just got out, like, earlier this year. Oh, so didn't that happen on the boondocks when he's like, I hit him with the Hennessy, and they locked his ass up on stage and drug... drug. (laughs) Yes, Thug Nificence. Thug Nificence. But guess what? It it, it, it comes down to that that reality type of thing. You know, you can only rap if you really live in this stuff. But why should you be living that way? Why not teach something different since you made it out? Why why you think Master P not, not popping no more? Because he ain't talking about the same thing. Because he said, look, I done made it out the hood, and I'm trying to teach other young black men how to make it about the hood. Now watch this. And we're going to show you. First, we got to show you what their plan is. Then we're going to show you the, uh, the, psychology, the psychological effects behind it. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Read that. Facts about hip-hop in prison for profit. Now, remember, the other article was talking about them building privately owned prisons, Dude couldn't drop no name. So I know they got some people out there. Oh, that's that. Y'all just pulled that out of nowhere. Okay. We're going to see. Look at the, the, the years that have gone by. We had Public Enemy. They were talking about uh, uh, fight the power. Yep. Yes, sir. It was politically charged music. Mm-hmm. Then in the 90s, you got N.W.A., they start to influence a lot of different people. A lot of people was influenced by NWA. And guess what? From there, you get all of these people that's talking about selling crack now. All these people talking about dope now. Everybody is on the rise. You got the gold rope chains. You got the, 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 the nice Adidas. Then this stuff starts switching over. And as stuff starts switching over, hmm, the 1994 crime bill gets introduced. Yep. And the music just so happens to get worse. You think that was by des- you think that was by accident? Come on now, dog. That was decisive. In order for the music to shift, guess what? The prisons are gonna have to adjust with it. Why you think? Co- name a country song that's talking about killing Billy Bob, putting Becky on the corner to make me some money. Nope. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. You can't go. N- Country songs is about pain. That's why they didn't like Lil Nas X. It's like, nah, this little Negro can't come up in here and do country. Uh, country exactly. is sacred. Yep. And you know what I think also, Matt? They believe it or not, they got little little white kids that rap that gangster murder. But guess what? They'll never get a deal because 
they don't want that in any damn community. They got little white girls that rap about selling their butt and all that stuff. But that would never, you would never hear about it because they say, I'd be damned if I back this and let this go in my community. Yeah, that's why the little cash me out girl, they threw her to the Negroes. Yep. Right. Like, you want to be a Negro? You go chill with them then. Yep. We'll see you in about five years when you got three kids. Yep, because you don't see the equivalent of the, the white women twerking and just exploiting their body, shaking their behind in front of a camera as much as you see our, our sister doing that. Nope. And if they do do that, they're not going back to their community with oh, that. No. They stand in our community yep. and making our brothers lust after that. They probably like, got AIDS. Like, like Officer Evan just brought out about you'll never see little white kids uh, rapping about drugs and all that. You won't see it in the community. You won't see it uh, live. I just saw an interview with uh, Scarface where he said he tried to uh, sign the rapper Haystack and he couldn't sign Haystack. And you know Haystack raps about the he, he was the epitome of Dev Jam South from the Martha Scarface, so you know what he was rapping about. And he couldn't get signed. That's why, because they don't want to. They don't want that Edomite image out there pushing that negativity to get in their kids' mind. Yep. Hey, get Colossians three right, right, right before we start reading this facts about hip hop for prison for profit. So Colossians three and what? Three and eight. The book of Colossians, chapter three and verse eight. But now you also put off these things. Um, excuse me. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemies, filthy communications out of your mouth. So we supposed to get rid of these things. Rap, a lot of the rap today promotes these things. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of the artists that don't talk about what they talking about mainstream they're underground. You can only find them on mixtape sites, or you got to find them at a show. You got to get the money, the, the 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 product directly from them. You want their music? You got to go to where they put their music at. If they did put their music on iTunes, Spotify, and all of that stuff, you have to know that artist's name to search them out. You have to search out good artists. That's why with with, with original royalty, we have to create good music and put all of this stuff on the map, we can get rid of all of that evil music. We can get rid of all of that. Read that, uh, that, that article. The people who own the media are the same people who own the private prisons. The exact same people. And using one to promote the other is or would be, depending on your analyst, very lucrative. So the same people that own the media are the same people that own the private prison systems. Scroll down. All right, read that. Now watch this. This is gonna this this right here is gonna get deep. Golden Underground TV recently released an interview I did with them last year. I got a bit animated at the end. Only so many interviews in a row I could handle being asked about Chief Keef. My tirade wasn't really about Chief Keef. It wasn't about Gucci Mane or Waka Flocka or any of the acts spontaneously capulated and catapulted. To, catapulted, excuse me, and to stardom by synchronized mass media coverage despite seemingly universal indifference. At the very best, regarding their talent. So what he's saying is, it wasn't that Gucci Man or Waka Flocka or Chief Keef wasn't talented. It wasn't that. Because even Waka Flocka himself said, it's funny how when I first come out saying, shoot him up, shoot him up, bang, bang, all this, that, and the third, I'm getting praise. But as soon as I switch my message up, now I'm not getting as much airplay no more. I'm not getting as much promotion no more. Waka Flocka came out and said that himself. So he, he already sees the fact that there's something behind this. Just because we make this music, why are they loving it so much? Hey, the article said the same exact people that own the media own the prisons, right? Hey, real quick, I just posted an uh, article in Precept Upon Precept, uh, the link I just posted. Let's, let's pull that up. So let's read this real quick, who this is. Cherie Ellen Redstone. An Sherry Ellen R Redstone. 
Sherry Ellen Raystone, an American is an American media executive uh-huh. with a background in numerous aspects of the entertainment industry right. and related ventures. Read. She currently serves as the chairman of Viacom CBS. Viacom. Viacom CBS. And president of National Amusements. Uh-huh. She's formerly served as the vice chairman of CBS Corporations and Viacom. Read. Through National Amusements, Raidstone and her family are majority owners of CBS, uh-huh. Comedy Central, uh-huh. BET, uh-huh. Showtime Networks, and the film studio Paramount Pictures. So they own the media, right? Scroll down. Scroll down. I want, uh, matter of fact, I want Early Life. Right there. Early, Read that. Early Life and Education. Raidstone was born in to a Jewish family. A what? And to a Jewish family. Hey, drop the mic, turn the TV off, it's over. The same Jewish people that own the media, own the prison system, and they set this up. Come Fix on your now, face. Dog. Fix your whole face. Yes. Hey, read that last read that last one. Red Stone was born into a Jewish family and is the daughter of Phyllis Gloria Raphael. And Summer Raystone, and is the sister of Brent Raystone. Read the last sentence. The last, last two sentences. She received her. She, okay. She received her law degrees at Boston University School of Law. Why would a law degree person own media companies? <laughs> Why would she be the head of media? Several yeah. prominent media companies. Read on. She practiced. Corporate law. Wow. Uh-huh. She even practiced corporate law. Go ahead. Estate planning. Here it is. And criminal law. Es- estate planning. Uh-huh. Estate planning. Planning and estate. Yeah. Seeing how to structure their business. Yeah. Read. And criminal law in Boston area before joining National hey, Amusement. Hey, you read past that too fast. It said in criminal law. So she she she's a law student practicing criminal law and corporate law and now she owns a lot of media companies that push images to impressionable people. And hmm. e- even with that estate planning, they plan the estates of these artists like like when they uh drug Michael Jackson name through the mud, through the mud and after he died they were arguing over his estate cuz you know he brought Sony and you know how much his estate was worth. That's what she does. Yup. Go back to the other article. Read that. Who's arrest? Okay. Uh, Who's arrest involvement in underground pregnancy? I'm sorry. Excuse me. In underage pregnancies, concert shoutouts, shootouts. Excuse me. Concert shootouts and facial tattoos. You need to be. You needed to be bigger. Hey, hey the reader need yeah, to fix his whole up. face and read. <laughs> you need to be right. bigger. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Officer Mike. I help him out. Dominate comp. Who's up. who's arrest? Start who's arrest again? Who's arrest involvement in underage pregnancies? So their arrests, their involvement in underage pregnancies. Go ahead. Concert shootouts. Shootouts and facial tattoos. Facial tattoos. Dominate conversations for weeks at a time with their actual music a mere afterthought, if thought of at all. So why would they in the media be more focused on how many times they got arrested, how many women that they got pregnant, how many times they've been in a, in a shootout or the talk about the shootouts that they were involved in and why are they always talking about their facial tattoos if they have any? How come their music is always an afterthought? Because the image of the artist matters more than the music that's portrayed. Esau could deal with the humida shubida shubida whoopida as as long as the image matches what they're trying to create. Yep. That's why nowadays a lot of these little cats is running around here trying to look like the artists that they that they listen to. Mm-hmm. They looking like NBA Young Boy. They looking like uh a few years ago they was looking like Wiz Khalifa. That's why a lot of the dudes in New Orleans was looking like Lil Wayne. I was clowning the cameraman earlier. They he came into the truth looking like Lil Wayne. 
Damn. Came with the long dreads and all that. He came in the truth looking like Lil Wayne. Come Why? Because that was one of his favorite artists. Hey, also, you put all them ingredients together and you bake it. What do you get? A the, jail. the American you get Negro. A, you get a prison degenerate. <laughs> you get the Negro. Read on. My tirade was about marketing. So his tirade wasn't about all of the stuff that they do. It was about the marketing. Read. It was about media power seeking out the biggest pretend criminal kingpins they could find, many of whom who shamelessly adopted the names of actual real-life criminal kingpins like 50 Cent and Rick Ross had ex and exalting them as the poster child for a culture. So what he was focused on was how they find these fake criminals and then use these people as the image of hip-hop and rap and music. Studio gangsters. Yes. Yes. They put all of these different people out there, and it's like, why? Why Why? Why did you choose these people? Have you ever wondered why would they choose a man that was willing to put on a white wedding dress and hold an AK-47? Mm -hmm. Why is that even a thing? It's going to tell you why. Read on. It was about an art form reduced to produce placement. Product placement. Product placement, my apologies. The selling of a lifestyle. And ultimately, a huge ad for imprisonment. Mm -hmm. oh, you got to read that mm -hmm. again. You got to read. It was about what? It was about an art form reduced to produce to product product product. I don't know. I can't get that. I'm gonna restart over. It was about an art form reduced to product placement. So, so, so one of the things that uh, yeah. there's a rapper named Logic. He looked like a white boy, yeah. but he's black. Yeah, yeah. He said they don't buy music nowadays. They buy the brand. So they're not buying your music because they like you. They're buying who you are, that image. That's why it says the, the art form has been reduced to product placement. Why? Because before, the art form was a way to speak out. You had Curtis Blow. You know what I'm saying? You had uh, Public Enemy. You had KRS-One. You had all of these brothers that was speaking positivity in their songs. And why was their music pushed to the side? Then you had Tupac, Only God Could Judge Me, Biggie Smalls, You Look So Good. I, you, you, you know what he said. New York, y'all know what he said. You look so good, I'll do something to your daddy. You know what he said, New York. All right, we ain't going to get into that. But the aesthetic properties of music. He's regarded as a great. Why? Because of his rhythmic ability to uh, put, put rhymes together, which he was very good at. He said, I want to thank all y'all for not calling the police on me. While when I was, I was selling, selling crack to feed, feed my, my daughter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm selling crack. That's I'm degrading my people. That's an honorable thing to him. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to feed my child. Oh, they had this Negro on CNN. I saw CNN quoting his lyrics. It was all a dream. I used to say, I said, you, yeah. I couldn't why? believe what I was watching. You want to know why? Because a lot of our people, they, they listen to it. Why do you think? Why do you think? In, in in sad movies, they play those chords. Mm -hmm. It evokes an emotion. You hear little, that sad music? Billy die. They play the song. Yeah, like like, you know, I'm 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 in my mid thirties. Those of y'all who grew up watching Set It Off. Uh, now yes. think about it. Well, think about yes. it. Set It Off was about a group of women robbing, robbing people. Banks. They were robbing banks. banks. Yep. They were notoriously criminal. Yes. Notoriously criminal. One of them was the Sodomitis. Oh, yeah. Everybody cried at the end of the movie when they played that song. When the Sodomitis, when the Sodomitis when got missing, killed. Oh, I'm missing you. Uh -huh. Everybody cried at the end. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe. They was robbing people. <laughs> they were going to happen. What did you expect? What you oh, thought was going to happen? Why do you think, why do you think, uh, uh, what, those of y'all who still watch sports, you watch the NFL and all of that, why do they come to tears when the national anthem is played? Matter of fact, get that in Daniel 3. Get that in Daniel 3. Y'all got to understand the role throughout history that music has played. Now, this brother is sitting there talking about it, it was an art form reduced to product placement, the selling of a lifestyle, and ultimately a huge ad for imprisonment. Why? Because how many rappers that we grew up on was always talking about going to jail? We watched Tupac go to jail. Yep. 
Biggie talked about going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of these different artists, they talked about going to jail. Or what happened when it was in jail. Or oh, if it wasn't for this, I'd be dead or in jail. Oh. Yeah, I sold crack. I evaded the police. You know what I'm saying? But in the they same got- breath, the, the dude would say, kick in the door, wave in the full fo Nigga, where you think you going? Exactly. You run the- up at the- <laughs> Our people. <sighs> we got a lot of work to do. But to the to the point about fake drug kingpins, meanwhile, he is putting his child through college, yep. talking about he's the ice man, the the snowman. Yeah. Talking about he's the snowman. Jesus the snowman. Put his child through college on lies. And then married uh at Moab. Moab. Moab, yeah. Come on now, dog. Read Daniel three and eight. The book of Daniel, chapter three and verse eight. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but falstries, and the clemmer, dulcimer, dulcimers, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. So they mm. said, whenever you, king, made a decree that said, whenever this music is played, down, 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 everybody down, bows down, down and worship down. this image. Now, bow, bow, bow. you bring that to, to nowadays, you got to put your hand on your heart down, 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 and, and down, sing the down, national down, anthem. Down. And they got people that actually cry listening to this song. I used to always wonder, like, what is this? Li-? He's like 6'2". 265, and he got tears running down his face with, with war paint on because he about to go crush another man on the on, on the football field. <laughs> but you know how they do it? They'll get somebody like Whitney Houston out there. Yep, Luther to sing. Luther Vandross. They yep. get our people to sing this yep. song. And then yep. Jake out there crying, yeah, man, you know, touch my heart. Hey, hey, you know, and you know what they're the going to do now? You know what they say they're going to do now? They're going to play the black national anthem oh, going gosh. forward. They're going to play the regular national anthem and the black national anthem. Because you want to know why? Because you want to know why? Huh? Lift every voice and sing? Yes. You want to know why they're going to do that? Because sports is the only time black people and white people could come, come together, together and it ain't no beef. Black people and white people, you like the Saints, I like the Saints, we good until the Saints game is over. Yep. You like you like the Philadelphia Eagles? I like the Philadelphia Eagles. You got a Philadelphia Eagle t-shirt? I got on Philadelphia Eagle t-shirt. And you know what's crazy? We got crazy? on apparel? We cool until the game over. Because then everybody, like everybody, all of a sudden they magically gets drafted. They they language change. Yeah, we 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 doing we, good this year. Yeah, yeah, us. Yeah, we we yeah. What that cool this was? They're talking about the last name. I'm proud of my last name. Huh? Ladanian Thomas. Ladanian Thomas. That nigga was crying that slave day. This dude said we. Out. This is our name. Hey, Israel, change them high cool names, man. Yeah, if you ain't Israel, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all coons running around this thing talking right. about talking about I'm Smith. Right. <laughs> Smith for life. Smith. We're supposed to be talking about the aesthetic properties of music. Hey, hey ooh. Back. ooh. Got a coon on deck. Yeah, read on, read on. In the t- article, read on. This is not my opinion. This Matter of fact, read, read, read. It was about an art form. Okay, there it is. It was about an art form reduced to product placement, the selling of a lifestyle, and ultimately a huge ad for imprisonment. This is not my this is not my opinion. Now watch this. He said, This is not my opinion. Read. Last year, Corrections Corporation of America, CCA, the biggest name in private prison industry, contacted 48 states offering to buy their prisons. One stipulation of equ- eligibility. eligibility for the deal was peculiar. Particularly bizarre, an assurance by the agency partner that the agency has sufficient inmate population to maintain a minimum 90% occupancy rate over the term of the contract. They got to maximize Damn. how many Negroes they lock they up. Keep a 90%. They have to have a 90% occupancy rate throughout the course of the contract, Can however long the contract is. Can I get a script? Yeah. Let's get 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. 
How do you think they're going to do that? Keep the prisons 90% occupied. Well, guess what? They got thing, they got they got brothers that's all over Chicago, brothers all over New Orleans, mm-hmm. brothers all over Georgia. They getting killed, they getting arrested. All of these different little, little rappers nowadays is all going to jail behind discharge, that charge, murder charge, uh, 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 drug charge. All of these people is going to jail and it's being publicized in the media. So what that's gonna make the other young people do? Didn't well, he went to jail. Yeah, he that's cool. my idol. I like him. I look up to him. So jail must not be all bad. Didn't Bobby Smyrna like sign his deal and get arrested in the same week? I don't know if it was the same week, but yeah, he went to jail because of the music that he made. I don't know if it was the same week, but it it was because of his music. Yeah, how people destroy. They get out and then they say, "Yeah, I like to think all the people that held me down while I was in prison." Yeah, Yeah. and nobody told you stop doing the dumb stuff you was doing. Exactly. But everybody holler, "Free my boy!" Right. And get a shirt made. Hey, hey, and while you was in uh, court, the court was empty. Hey, nobody in there but you and the judge and your lawyer. Everybody else, yeah, on the outside and way back. Yeah, I got you back here. Free, free, yeah. free, free, free Tuki. Yeah, I just remember that. They were like, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, such and such. He put an album out while he was in prison. I said, what? Yeah, I'm talking about Tupac. Probably. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Go ahead with that scripture. Go, yeah. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feign, fe- feign words make merchandise of you. It says with feign words they'll make merchandise of you. So they give you this contract and all this lucrative, this lucrative record deal. You're going to be rich and famous. But you got to rap about killing your people, selling drugs to your people, uh, impregnating your women and leaving the, the, the mother that raised the baby by themselves. All this niggerdom, you got to rap about it, and you got to go to jail. And, and you know one thing, now I'm actually thinking about it, because I used to listen to music. I'm like, dude, get on the track. Do it, do it. I got a gun. I'm gonna kill him. Do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm like, how the hell did he get a deal? He thinking he the shit's nits whole time. No, <laughs> nigga. Excuse me. No, Negro. You you can't rap. They just want to use your degenerate behind to motivate the community to do murders and etc. Yep. Fix your whole face, officer. <laughs> so, so face. you Negroes who think you can rap and that you didn't blew up because of you, you got talent. <laughs> That's not the case, bro. Hey, learn, the, learn like Bishop said. Learn the scriptures first before you start trying to do music. Before but, you start music, learn the scriptures. They say the, the scriptures say they would make merchandise. Them going to prison is them make being made merchandise out of because the whole prison industry is being funded by these degenerates through the music. I know, I know factually, a few years ago, they said for every bunk that's filled in New Orleans Parish Prison, um, or Orleans Parish Prison, they get $30,000 for every bed. Them beds that's in there ain't worth 30000 but the body that lays on it is worth 30000 That's a college degree. Yeah. Yep. That's, they get thirty grand per inmate. Damn. Damn. In OPP, they get thirty grand per inmate, and that was just a few years ago. It probably went up. That's yeah, probably up. Now. Read that. Read read on in the article. What kind of legitimate and ethical measures could possibly be taken to ensure the maintenance of a ninety percent prison occupancy rate? I would like to know that yeah. too. I'd like to know mm-hmm. wh- how could you guarantee in a contract? Remember, these are business people. They say we ha- we need you to guarantee a ninety percent occupancy rate. How could you guarantee that? How? Read on. Two months later, an anonymous email was sent out to various members of the music and publishing industry giving an account of a meeting where it was determined that hip-hop music would be manipulated to drive up privatized prison profits. Did we not just read that? That's what I was about to say. Fix your whole face, precept upon precept. (laughs) Did we not just read that, that there was a meeting that took place? Hmm. Hmm. There's a reason why I'm bringing that meeting up. Read on. Its author, despite claiming to be a former industry insider, did not provide the names of anyone involved in the plot, nor did he specify by which company he himself was employed. As such, the letter was largely regarded as a fraud for lack of facts. Read on. 
Ninety percent of what Americans read, hey, watch, and that's and that's that's largely why you got to sign those NDA forms. So I'm anything supposed. that they're doing can be brushed, can be off. brushed off. Like what? You're, you're, they denied in court. <laughs> there's no proof of that. All you got to do, come on now. And then you're in violation because you signed a legally binding contract to not share any information. So you know, now you now you doubly effed. That sounds like a uh, a Mission Impossible movie. Like if you're caught. We will deny any, we will disavow any yeah, knowledge. They'll, they'll that sounds like what they do with the president, that uh, plausible deniability. That's exactly uh-huh. what they do. Read that. 90% of what Americans read, watch, and listen to is controlled by only six media companies. We just read that. Uh huh. PBS Frontline has described the conglomerates that determine what information is disseminated to the public as a web of business relationships that now defines America's media and culture. So six media companies that they describe as a conglomerate, they determine what information is disseminated to the public, and they call it a web of business relationships that defines America's media and culture. So the, the clothes that you wear, it was predetermined that you would wear skinny jeans. It was predetermined that we would wear baggy jeans. It was predetermined that y'all would wear mohawks. It was predetermined that y'all would put blonde streaks in y'all hair. All of this stuff was already premeditated. They already knew about this kind of stuff. And all they had to do was promote it once to you. And not only that, officer, back to that prison point, if you ever been to jail, I know a couple of us have probably been to jail before. They put you in that cold-ass holding cell where they put you on the floor with that. They put you on the floor with a mat. Sometimes you didn't even get a mat. They just put you in there get that hard-ass peanut butter. Yep. yep. Your shirt is your blanket. Yep, that's it. And your shoe is your pillow. Uh-huh. Read on. Business relationships. Last year, a mere 232 media executives were responsible for the intake of 277 million Americans, controlling all the avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity and incite any trend. I need you to read that again. Last year, a mere 232 media executives. So 232 media executives, not media companies. 232 media executives were responsible for what? For the intake of 277 million Americans. Meaning everything that you watched and everything that you've seen in the media, they was responsible for it. Read. Controlling all the avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity and incite any trend. They were able to manufacture any celebrity and incite any trend. They could have started a one shoe on and one shoe off trend and people would have followed it because they would have known exactly who to make do it and who was going to follow it. So so you saying they might be responsible for these tight pants. They are. It's not might. They are responsible. Because when I ask a lot of people, when I came home, it was tight pants. It was like an overnight shift. I'm like, one day we wearing baggy stuff, the next day I'm being clown for wearing jabos. For the man purses. You know what I'm saying? It's like, where did this come from? Everybody agrees. Damn, it kind of did pop up out of nowhere. There was no gradual increase into the skinny jeans. It was just one day, boom, skinny jeans, Thanos snap. <laughs> Read on. Time Warner, as owner of Warner Brothers Records. Now, I want y'all to understand it. Time Warner owns Warner Brothers Record Company. Read. Among many other record labels. And other record labels Time Warner owns. Read. Can not only sign an artist to a recording contract, but as the owner of Entertainment Weekly, can see to it that they get next week's cover. So Time Warner owns the record label. The record label owns the media companies. Why do you think Lil Yachty was in How High Part 2? <laughs> exactly. Why do you think that all of these different rappers and all of these, these, these sisters is doing stuff that are, they're going in movies now? They, they being on television commercials. You think uh, Cardi B did that Pepsi commercial just off the fly? Mm-hmm. No. The media company is owned by her record company. Therefore, they can take any celebrity... They can make anybody a celebrity. Cardi B is in Fast and Furious. I'll be John Brown. Read on. Read on. Also, the owner of New Line Cinemas, HBO, and TNT, 
They can have their artist cast in a leading role in a film that when pulled from theaters will be put into rotation first on premium, then on basic cable. So they can put them in the acting roles. Like if they get out of line, they, they just say, you're going straight to TV. They, they control the media. Yeah. Hey, there's a link that I just posted about Warner Brothers, the Wikipedia article. Could y'all open that? They control the media. So let's read about Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers re redirects here for the characters and animation. Just type uh, Warner Brothers in in yeah, Entertainment that's Incorporated. That's okay. that's, no, that's, that's, this is what I want, this uh, Wikipedia article. The one yeah, started yeah, right yeah. there. That's founded founded, founded one, by, in 1923. Okay, founded in 1923 by four brothers, Harry, Albert, Sam, and Jack Warner, the company established itself as a leader in the American film industry before diversifying into animation, television, and video games, as is one of the big five major American film studios, as well as a member of the Motion Picture Association. So Harry, Albert, and Sam, Sam and Jack, that's the Warner Brothers. Drop down the history. But y'all see Viacom and all that other stuff in there too, right? It clicked off of it. You want that one? But look, let's, let's read the company, company's company. name origin. The company's name originated from the founding Warner Brother, born Wansal, Roron, and Warkalosker, I guess that's that, from Alcization before Anglicization. Anglicization. Before they Americanized their name. Yes. Yes. Harry, Albert, Sam, and Jack Warner. Harry, Albert, and Sam. Immigrated as young children with their Polish Jewish mother to the United States from Kanoskelek. Polish Poland. Jewish. You have Amalek at it again. You have Amalek at it again. Do y'all, do you, every time we look up somebody that owns the media, it Jewish, that ish come up every time. Yep. Go back to the article. That ish come up every time, man. So, not only do they own the record companies, but they own the media outlets to put their artists on. If they want them on TV, guess what? They're on TV. If they want them in movies, guess what? They're in movies. It's easy for them. It's not like they have talent. Read. They can have their artists cast in a leading role in a film that went pulled from theaters. Okay, we're a little bit farther than that. No, I know we're without. Without. Without any consideration to the music whatsoever. The artist will already be a star. Though such monopolies also extend into radio stations and networks that air music videos. Hey, it said without, without consideration... To music whatsoever, the artist will already be a star. Like where in the where on God's green earth did Lil Baby come from? I, I ain't never heard of him before. Uh, before he just popped on the scene and he was a star. Uh, all of these Lil the Lil Lil, Lil, Lil Dirt, Lil Lil Waterbed, Lil uh, Pistol Starter, Lil Tabletop, um, Lil Nike Strap. All of these Lil dudes, they coming out of nowhere. They coming out of nowhere. Hey, real quick. Let's the show baby. them some of their rap. Hey, put the put the put the put the little boy on there. Put the little boy on there. King. K Y. King. <laughs> K Y. Now, do it here. Now, new thing now here. those of y'all who have children, I suggest you cover their little ears because I know they ain't never heard nothing like yes, this before. Yes. Uh -huh. So, I need y'all to cover this right here. Is about to fix your whole face. Play that. Play that. You know, anytime they say no homo, it's homo, right? Stop, bruh, bruh. He's laying down. In between another man legs. Talking about Come no homo. Now. But you didn't even have to fix your mouth to say no homo. You you you, 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 bruh. you need to fix his whole face. <laughs> yeah, bruh. Yeah, fix your face, bruh. brother. I bet they all sleep. Bruh, in the this same is bed. gonna be a trend. This is why these little dudes 
these, this is why these Ladoos right here, they're going to create the next generation of monsters. You wanna know why? Now, I gotta put this out there. A lot of times, when we talk about the destruction of music, a lot of people say, well, that's what time it is, and that's who's supporting it, right? Mm -hmm. They say, that. well, that's who's buying the music nowadays. No, it ain't. It's I say parents. this a lot. The parents, y'all are the ones that buy them cell phones. Y'all right. are the ones that buy the music off of the, off of, uh, y'all gave them the, the ability to get Apple iTunes and Spotify. Y'all paid that bill. Yep. So y'all are paying for this music. Yo, guess what? We still buy music. There's no way on God's green earth that we should not be able to have music of our demographic. Rap is not only meant for young little fake thugs like this. Rap is meant for everybody. You're supposed to learn something. KRS taught about us being the Israelites in a rap song. Yes. Original royalty got brothers and sisters that are putting out music that are edifying the people. And they not 16, 17 years old. We got to start to get out of their mindset that, that music is a young man's game. Now, I understand why they say it, because a lot of these dudes use music as a way to F off in life and just get quick money. That's understandable. But there's an edification aspect behind it that can be exploited. And a lot of it is not being used the right way because music is not in our hands. It's in the hands of our enemies. Hey, get the other one. Get the other one. <laughs> yeah, they wasn't boss layer training. Yeah, they was, was KY. Hey, training. go back to his go name. Go back to his name. Go back to his name. They were training. You see that? Like... Hey, rewind it. Go back to his name. Make sure they can see his name. Cause his, his name ain't King. He's KYing. Where the KY? <laughs> his name is KYing. K Y Y N G G. Come that is K Y N. If that ain't the most sodomitish oh, way to man. spell King. I'm I'm still trying to get past like it says King lets his blood gang homies. These supposed to be blood like back in the day, Bloods was like some fierce dude. Yeah, like hard and hard and you know bruh. Like bruh. Hitters. These this dudes dude, was no bruh. joke. This bruh. dude yes. bruh. This dude run up on you saying run your pot. I'm like, bro, I can't I can't bruh. run nothing. Hey, what you that nigga that was on a video land between that dude's legs? That's what you gonna remember. That's that's your legacy. Bruh. Run what? Man, you better go back. Man. Come on, <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, blood. Booty love on other dudes. <laughs> oh, damn, homie. That's what that new that's what they doing. Booty love on other dudes. <laughs> go go back to go back to go to go to Fix the next your whole one. face. Go to the next one. Yes. No, Fix no, no, not face. that one. Not that one. The other one, man, you didn't send him the dudes. The dudes that was with the with the with the pistol in the car. It's a, yes, yes. Yeah, it was a world star video. Oh yeah, I'm the dude with the pistol in the car. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, here we go. Here yes, we go. There you go. This, this is the modern day rappers. Right now, now, now I want y'all to understand something. Remember, the articles was talking about a lifestyle. The scriptures talk about filthy communication. It talks about all of these things. Why is it talking about these things? Because the filthy communication that's being used is geared for your children. Who owns World Star? He saw all World Star. The same people that own Warner Brothers, the same people that own Viacom, that own World Star. And you pay fifty dollars for your video to be on World Star. I know, cause I was trying to be. I'm um, telling you, I'm telling you, I know all the marketing. Play that. Fuck you thought this was, nigga. Fuck, come here. Ah! Come here, bitch. Gotta go down. He about to. Uh oh. What? Come oh. on, bro. Come on now, dog. I'm glad, I'm, hey, I'm glad right they there. put the face come there. On, man. I'm come glad on, they put the dog. face there. Fix your whole face. Come Cause, bro, that's who y'all listen to now. Now, not not. These ain't rappers. But, but they, they look listen, like them. Uh, they listen yeah. to them. They look like them rappers. They look, look like the Chief Keeps and the Lil Dirks and all of that. The tattooed they like, face. They look like they rap about they look murder. Like, they look like all of that. They look yep. like they rap about murder. They look like day. they got a little Uzi Vert playing in the background right now. Hey, wise man once said, once you get tatted on your face, bro, you feel to the brim. That's it. Satan done poured feel every drop. To the brim. He done poured every drop. He done got the dregs of the cup. You feel to the brim, bro. Get out of that. Get out of that. Get out of that. Oh, 
Go back to the article. Bruh, that's what these dudes is doing. And y'all can try to run my background. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I tried. Look, I, I erased everything off the internet because I had control of it. I erased everything. Y'all ain't going to find it unless you come to my house. So go go, <laughs> go to the next one. And some, hey, some of y'all done heard the, the stuff that I was telling you. Scroll down. Scroll down on that. <laughs> it's it's your face. Skittles. Fix your face. Um, right there. Right there. Right there. You may be thinking. You may be thinking, well, Vanguard is only the third largest holder in those media conglomerates, which is not guaranteed that they're calling any shots. Well, the number one holder of both Viacom and Time Warner, Time Warner is a company called BlackRock. BlackRock is the second largest holder in Corrections Corporations of America, second only to Vanguard and the sixth largest holder in the GEO Group. So... BlackRock that owns Viacom and Time Warner is also the second largest shareholder in the, the CCA. So you don't think you that the private fees. prisons got something to do with the music that's being put out in the media and the images that we, that we why, who came out? Who in the hell let Flavor Flav have a TV show with all the women dressed like that? And then after that, gave a hundred different spinoffs. Real Chance at Love, I Love New York. Uh, you had um, you had Shaq dating one of the girls from Flavor Love. Mm -hmm. They had old girl Delicious on there. You know what I'm saying? Now they got what? Uh, real, real hip, real. What is it? What is it? Love, love and hip hop. hop. Love and hip hop. They got love and hip hop. Real housewives of Atlanta, uh, baby mamas of of Miami. Yep. They got all kind of stuff going on real now. Holes of, what uh, else? Uh, real holes of Florida. Marriage boot camp. Ain't none of them. Wow. <laughs> Come on now, dog. Wow. Wow. Come they got all on, of these man. different all that fornication, and they got a marriage boot camp with all that fornication. And I bet you it's ratchet. Oh, you? I bet you it's ratchet. <laughs> I bet you it's ratchet. I ain't never even heard of it before. I bet you it's ratchet. Brazilian it's on VH1? Fake breasts. It, it's ratchet. Oh. It's ratchet. If it's on VH1, it's ratchet. It's ratchet. Hey, yep. guess who owns VH1? Viacom. Viacom. Yes. Wow. So they lock him in the mansion and make him expose all of the stuff that's going on and the problems in their relationship. That's what happened. Give me, give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. When you not, and, and guess what? A lot of times, a lot of our sisters nowadays, that's why they so bugged out. Mm -hmm. They watching stuff like Love and Hip Hop, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, right. uh, uh, Marriage Boot Camp. They watching all of these celebrity relationships thinking this is how a relationship is supposed to be. Why, why do they think that? Because they're impressionable. Mm -hmm. Because they're looking at what, what, what media has told them what a relationship is. Not what grandma told them. Oh, no, grandma was in oppression. Mm -hmm. Grandma, uh -huh. grandma was oppressed. Yeah, she, didn't she, she, she had 17 kids, and, and grandpa left uh, an estate for grandma to have, so yeah. she don't want for nothing, but she was under oppression. Was oppressed. Meanwhile, your black behind got to get out here and work 50 hours with the men, and now you're going home all mad and distraught and, di and disturbed in your head because now you got to take care of a household after you didn't took care of the white man company. Now you, now you, now you upset. Could have had it easy, but guess what? The uh -huh. media has taught us that that's not the relationships to have. Right. Read that. The Book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen and verse four. Marriage is honorable in all, and obeyed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge whoremongers and adulterers. And part of that judgment is you being put out there for the world to see. Embarrassment. Married at first sight. That's another show. Oh, my wife saw that. 90 Day Fiance. Bruh, they had females up in there that was straight up harlots. Come on now. <laughs> straight up. And they had to get married. Damn. Oh, my God. To a man. 
And they actually had to live together like it was going to work. <laughs> this is the stuff that real. Esau plays games with us, bro. Hey, can we scroll hey. back up in this article? So it says uh, Black, Black Rock. Where, where was that at? Go, go, down, down, go, go down, down, go down, go down. Right there. You made right me there. thinking. It said Black Rock is the second largest holder in Corrections America, second only to Vanguard, right? But it said Black Rock holds stock in both Viacom and Time Warner. Yeah. So let's see who owns Black Rock. They are the number one holder of both Viacom and Time Warner. Okay. Hey, there's a Wikipedia article I just sent. Larry Fink, that Wikipedia article. Pull that up. We're going to show y'all again, just in case y'all ain't really been realizing. Oh. It says, Lawrence Douglas Fink, American billionaire, businessman. He is the chairman and CEO of Black Rock. So scroll down. Let's go to uh, early life, early life and education. It says Fink. Fink. Fink was born November second, nineteen fifty-two. He grew up in a Jewish family. <laughs> Showing y'all again that Amalek is the one running this. So, so technically, Jewish owned the media. That's what it's looking like. They yes. own the media yeah, and exactly. the prison. The media and the prison companies. Damn. Y'all can get out of that. I just wanted to show y'all one more time. Seems like they got hatred for us or something. Bruh, hey, read read that next paragraph. There are many. There are many other star startling overlaps in prison, excuse me, in private prison mass media ownerships. But two underlying facts become clear very quickly. The people who own the media are the same people who own the private prisons. The exact same people. And using one to promote the other is or would be, depending on your analysts, very lucrative. So they're using one to promote the other. He just said what we've been pointing out all night. What we just showed y'all through the articles and the Wikipedia links. They just said it. That, that, look, bro, I'm telling you. The aesthetic property of mute. Matter of fact, hold, hold that because the, the time is winding down. Damn, boy. <laughs> hey, it's a lot. It's a lot on this one. Why Why he getting that? Just read that last statement right there. It's such a scheme. Such a scheme would be mean. Such a scheme would mean some very greedy, very racist people. You can stop right there. They're greedy and they're racist. Hey, go to the next article. They got hypnotism and brainwashing over it. So they can know the kingdom too. They, they own Telemundo. So wait, so wait. Who own Who own Telemundo? Viacom owned Telemundo, Telemundo too. Hey, that's why Northern they got. Kingdom hey, getting hey, and, hey, and I used to watch it when I was younger. That's why they got Sabato Igante. <laughs> that that's, hey, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of Northern Kingdom sisters shaking their behinds in bikinis. Yep. Yep. It's like a it's like a big party. I ain't watched it since I was like sixteen. So, but I did <laughs> used to watch it. <laughs> Cause they want. That's what they want, bro. That's what they want. They want oh, us to lust. Fix your whole face. Hey, fix your. Face. I hate my face is fixed. Gotta keep it real. <laughs> gotta hey, gotta keep it real. Yeah. That, that, well, that's, that's what was growing. We was growing up. We used to watch that. Now watch this. Roll it up. All right. Me. I still oh, it's still old, white it's owned man. by Comcast. That's still what? Jewish, man. Still, 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 still Amalek. Still a dude. Yeah. Musical hypnosis. Sound and chefhood from mesmerism. And mesmerism. To, mesmerism. Mesmerism. To brainwashing. Well, I got you covered, brother. I got you covered. Scroll down. We need to fix your face. All right. Music has long been associated with trances, but very little has been written about the modern Western discussion of music as a form of hypnosis or brainwashing. Whoa. I'm going to read that again. Music, read that again. Music has long been associated with trance states, but very little has been written about the modern Western discussion of music as a form of hypnosis or brainwashing. Damn. Music, according to Western society, we live in the West, is used as a form of brainwashing. Didn't Sigmund Freud want Sigmund Freud from the West? Yes. You know when they say brain when they say Western society, you know they're talking about Esau. Yes. Watch this. However, from Mesmer's use of the glass harmonica to the supposed dangers of subliminal messages in heavy metal, the idea that music can overwhelm listeners' self-control 
has been a recurrent yeah. theme. Uh -huh. So remember how, how people listen to rock and roll and they say, play the record backwards. They got a message in it. Where do you think they got that from? Because they're trying to hypnotize you. They put backwards words in the message and, and you, they, they, they used to spin the record backwards and get messages out of the songs. Didn't they do the same thing with uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony? That East 99 album? They play it backwards. Yeah, the they did the thing. same thing with uh, Your Love, with Nicki Minaj, That's all of crazy. that stuff. Watch this. Yep, with 3-6 yeah. and all of that. Well, 3-6, they was really worshiping the damn devil. In particular, the concepts of automatic response and conditioned reflex uh -oh. have been the basis for a model of psycho psychological and psych... Huh? Physiological. Oh, physiological and psychology in which the self has been depicted as vulnerable to external stimuli such as music. You know what that's saying, right? What? A that's saying, like, you remember that, uh, the beep test that they had yep. when people walk in yep. and they hear the beep and they start standing up? And next thing you know, everybody started to stand. There's one person sitting down and like, why are you not standing up when we're standing up? That beep Man. influenced them to, to stand up and sit down. They, it's called classical conditioning. Yeah. You listen to that for so long, you, you start to condition and you start to act out that behavior that's being hypnotized and stored in your dome. It, it says, I'm going to read it again. It says, in particular, the concept of automatic response and conditioned reflex. Mm -hmm. That means as soon as you hear the beep, you start that, to nod your head. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And if that, you don't nod your head, everybody looking at you like, what's wrong with you? Oh, you, you, you must not be feeling you it. You ain't hit with this? You ain't down with you this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think these little dudes is walking around with guns? They all got dreads in their hair. Their dreads is blind. They got the skinny pants on. They're sagging below their behind. All of these different things, they are walking around hypnotized and brainwashed and don't even know it. Why do you think all the music sound the same? Prime example. Smile for me. Let me see your grills. Everybody was walking. Niggas was putting aluminum foil in their mouth. Yep. Mm -hmm. was, people were out of control. Yep. And, and, they, used to, they used to take the gum wrappers yep. and put <laughs> yeah. the gum wrappers on there. Yep. And you think about it, too. Let somebody be driving past and playing Cardi B, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Watch what them the girls watch what hey. the start doing. Start. The, the butts go to shaking. That's as soon it. as you turn it on, it's just like a thing. Yep. They just twerking. Yep. So this has been introduced. Guess what? Oh, matter of fact, let me. Let me. This yeah. article will examine this discourse of hypnotic music from an animal magnetism and the experimental hypnosis of the 19th century to the brainwashing panics since the Cold War, looking at the relationship between concerns about hypnotic music and the politics of the self and sexuality. So that sounds like they use music as part of MK Ultra. They use music as a way to start to get m people to have more sex. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's oh. where that sexual revolution came yeah, from. That's music. It. That's where baby making music comes uh -huh. from. Uh. Oh, they got this baby making music. It puts you in the mood. Why do you think that they make stuff like that? Why? To promote it more. All the single ladies. Why do you think all of these women walk around talking about, I don't need no man? But now that there's music to back all of that up, I don't cook, I don't clean, but I still got a ring. Not even though she's cooking and cleaning. Yeah, cleaning, yeah. Even though she's doing that. But sisters will listen to that music, and now they've adopted that idea because they've been hypnotized and brainwashed to do so. And guess what? It, it doesn't just fall on the listeners. The artists actually get hypnotized and brainwashed too. Remember Montel Jordan? He used to sing about all this fornication and having sex with all these different women, and he actually ended up going out committing adultery against his wife. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, play a little bit of that. Oh, then. Yeah. Play a little bit of that. Oh damn! You gotta think. This <laughs> well, this, this, this is this is deep. The rabbit now look, hole now look, is deep. Now look, rap started off. There was politically charged. Fight the system. Then everybody wanted to be a dope boy. Then everybody wanted to uh to be a partying dope boy. Now everybody just a junkie. Yep. <laughs> in the 90s. Not everybody just a junkie. Hey, matter of fact, uh, Molly Percocet, Molly, Molly Percocet, Molly Percocet, Molly Percocet. You know that dude ain't never took neither one of them? Yeah, that's what he said. He made a song called Molly Percocet, but he don't do drugs. Future don't do no drugs. So why he made it? But he influenced all your young people to do it. Just get to the hook, because this is, this is just tr this was troubling me. Where, where the hook at? Uh, it's, <laughs> it, it's right in the middle. Hey, just play it, just play it, just play it. We don't know where it's going to start. Just get to the hook.
Hey, that's how they get you right there. That, that, that beat. beat. That's how they get you. And they ain't jake it. I people listen to what they say. That automatic re- response. And it gets you the vibe in your head. Yep. This is a story about a friend real close to me. Through high school, junior high, and elementary. Stop. We stuck together. Like- now, these are the songs that won't ever get played. Mm-mm. He's telling a story about somebody that was close to him that ended up being a dope fiend. And more than likely, when you listen to it, it's, it's probably a song of regret and he wished that it didn't happen to him. But nowadays, Molly Percocet, Molly Percocet. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 what, what, remember when Molly was, was coming out years ago? Rick Ross even said it. Molly all in a drink. She ain't even know it. Like, you talk about raping a, a chick, drugging her and raping her. The imagery, and he, the imagery he was showing was, my brother was struggling. But they don't they don't put stuff like this out no more. No, because, because it's this not is troubling to watch. Like his he his his homeboy got strung out. Yeah. And there was one female uh I saw on TV, not on TV, but it was on YouTube, and she was rapping. She was going in. Like she was really talking about some real stuff. It wasn't like killing or shaking her behind or nothing like that. And I'm like, man, this female is fire. My wife was like, yeah, that that she does sound good. I said, but guess what? She'll never make it. She'll never be heard. She was like, why you say that? I said, because she not half naked, and she ain't talking about selling her body. Guess what? To that point, Nicki Minaj was known as Nicki the Ninja and was spitting hot fire, and nobody knew who she was. But yep. then she started dressing like Lil' Kim, and she was the number one female rapper ever. Lil Wayne paid for her body, and then she blew up. Yeah, because she had a little boy about it at first. Hey. So now that we know that the, the 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 music society is geared to, oh my God, to just do destruction to our people, let's get us. Can we get a song? Can we get a song? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Give me Psalms one forty nine. Bring it out. So yes, we had to we had to expose, and there was there's a lot more to go into. Lord's will, we'll probably go into more of it another different time, but. Music is used as a tool to hypnotize our people so that they can do crimes, so that they can become, like the article said, prison degenerates. They use music as a tool to put in our people's minds about lifestyle, the way they should live, the way they should act, the way they should behave, the way they should talk, the way they should dress. Everything. Everything influences our people. So now we have to unravel all of that. That's why we have to teach on the street how to dress. That's why we have to teach on the street that blonde hair is unclean. And to those of y'all who be defending that blonde hair stuff, you Stop wicked it. as hell. Stop you it. wicked as hell. Stop Talking it. about some, well, we got the Eve jeans so we could create all kind of hair. But how come every light-skinned person you see, you say they mixed? They say they got the Eve jean, but you know every one of Eve babies was black with woolly hair? And, and, and it's a trip part, though. And, and if I can, we're not going to play it. We're not going to play it. But just type in Lil Nas X. I just want to show y'all something. Oh we're not going to play this video because it's too graphic. Y'all can watch it at your own discretion. No, y'all can't. Don't watch it. Okay. Do not. All right. So you see Lil Nas X, Jack Harlow, Industry Baby, right? You got to think about it. Why did he name that music Industry Baby? Because that's what the industry is pushing. That's what the media wants him to push. He didn't just name it that for no reason. Y'all think about that, man. They how, call it an industry plant. How is that not deemed inappropriate? Why is that not blocked on Facebook, on uh, YouTube? That should be blocked. He's, hey, he's, he's, guess had, what? he's hey, naked. We're going to get blocked tonight. But look, yeah, we'll get blocked. but look, watch. Go, go, go. Like when you, when you, when you type in Lil Nas X, that video that he just First named, came up. it was dropped 23 hours ago. It's got 10 million views. About 10 million. million. 10 million. Meanwhile, IUIC puts out a video. They mess with our numbers. You know? IUIC, the day of the Christian coon, that video should have trillions. I watched that thing like three, four Christian times Christian pastor not prepared week. for the battle years that, ago. That should have a million. It, over, it, 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 million. Had, okay. it had over a million views. It's never going to go un- over 
500,000 views. Every time it goes over 500,000 views, it gets knocked back down to like 460 something thousand views. It had over a million views. I watched it. I watched it hit uh cuz when I came into the truth, it was it was still fairly new. Yes. And then over the course of the the the, the years, it gained a lot of traction. A whole lot of traction and hit over a million views and when I went back again, it was at like 400,000 views because they mess with our videos, but they promote that foolishness. Come on now. Read for Psalms 149. The book of Psalms 149 and verse 1. Raise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and, his pr and praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the trembles and harps. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful and glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron, to execute upon the judgment written, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hey, right. David was spitting that high fire. Praise ye the Lord. Ba ba I said bars. 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 That's the song that we want to hear. That's the song that motivates us. That's right. Yes, we're brainwashed to think that our forefathers had our back. We're brainwashed and, and, and hypnotized from the songs of this Bible to make sure that we keep the commandments and the faith of Christ so that we can get up out of here so our enemies are destroyed. Right. Praise right. ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Con, con, con. <laughs> so this is this is a hey, is this has been uh fix your, fix your face with IYC New Orleans and precept upon precept. I hope you brothers and sisters were edified. Uh, Lord's will, we'll touch more into it because there's a lot more. We only got through like half of each article just so we, because we wanted to keep it within the, the, the time frame. All right, so we appreciate y'all, Israel. Y'all have a happy Sabbath. Y'all have a happy new moon. All right, I am Officer Matthew to my left. Officer Mikael. To my far left. Officer Michael. Even further left. Officer Iran. And this has been IUIC Precept Upon Precept, standing there for Fix Your Face, and we say Shalom. Shalom. You listen to precept on precept.